G'day guys and welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for this week's update on the game day squad league that we've got going here as a competition on True Footy. So if you guys haven't done it already, check out the link in the description you can play along with us. As you probably know by now, game day squad is kind of like an alternative to the other fantasy games that you get in AFL. There's rugby league modes as well, but uh, we're obviously playing the AFL version being the True Footy YouTube channel. And I don't know about you guys, but this game has overtaken fantasy in terms of my favorite game to play by a long way. I'm finding myself uh, a little bit obsessed with it actually. Uh, it's getting addictive. As you know, over the last few weeks, the, the strategy has been to invest my resources into notching up, in particularly my forward line. We've added a number of gold players to that forward line to get that 1.2 multiplier to improve the forward line. And it's starting to pay off. I did have a slightly improved week in terms of scoring this week. We'll get into it by looking at the ranking of the True Footy League. So we've got 99 members already, guys. It's never too late to, to join up. It's all completely free if you want to play for free. But to have 99 people in the league uh, taking part in all the fun, it's, uh, it's, it's great. So thank you very much for getting stuck in. Uh, we still have Peanut Butters League in the league well done with 18 191 and i'm a long way back i'm in eighth which is uh, i'm pretty happy with that to be top 10 in the league um certainly doing better in this than i am in fantasy by comparison but peanut butters has been leading pretty much every week and they're a fair way in front to be honest as well we can look at the round by round stats as well and flag pies 2023 scored a monstrous 24 92 and that's in the capped league as well you can see here in open there's uh there's also different rankings for open and free take got 2625 free take what a name and then in the season there's more toes magicians as well with 1903 so well done to peanut butters who's still second despite him having a capped team if that makes sense as i said uh, i had a slightly improved week on this week i think i was like ranked 42nd last week in the true footy comp for my round score this week i uh, did much better with 14th and i'd like to think so because it means my strategy is a little bit validated so in this video uh, as usual we're going to go through a quick, little quick review of my team i've got the starter packs to open to see if i can improve my squad as well and i've got one other little idea to add a player through the transfer market but we'll get into all of that we'll start off here uh, as you can see i'm at 100 percent of my salary cap and that's dictated by how many gold and silver players etc that I have in my in my team as you know that I've got a, a platinum Clayton Oliver which takes up a fair chunk of my salary cap and then uh, five out of my six forwards are gold but we'll go through line by line now I have something to confess to you guys I got a little bit excited I actually received a starter pack from game day squad because I reported a bug that I was having on the website there is actually a place to report with a screenshot uh, any bugs that you find with the website as they're trying to improve their website and I had the bug where if you remember I couldn't make changes to my team it was told me I was still in lockout but it wasn't actually in long lockout so long story short they sent me a starter pack for submitting that as a bug and I got a little bit excited and I opened the first one without recording and I thought what are the chances I get a good player and sure enough it was Nick Dacos so I've got Nick Dacos in my back line now this week wasn't his best week. He scored 103, but as you can see, his average is 137. So even as a bronze player, um, that's a huge plus to my back line. We're going to go through the rest of my starter packs in a little bit. But on the whole, my defense did solidly. Um, I had Lockie Weller originally on the field, but he was, I think he failed a fitness test this week. Nick Haynes did really well with 134. Luke Ryan, 123, really dependable. I really want these guys to all be getting 100 plus. Nick Newman, a little bit quieter by his own standards. Um, after a huge game against West Coast. Redmond with 87 was a bit disappointing, but Hunter Clark getting about 99 when his average is 97. Yeah, I gotta be happy with that. I think the midfield is where uh, I was a little bit let down this week. Clayton Oliver uh, scored 153, which means he's only scored 118 um, real points, but because he's got the multiplier, it's 153. That was actually his quietest game for the season. And then as you can see, Newcomb got 87, Trelaw got 87, uh, and Dacos 85. That all really hurts, actually. That's all a fair bit down on their averages. So I've probably lost 60 points there just from my midfielders having quieter games than usual. Tim English came back with a bang. Um, last week, you'll remember, Rowan Marshall did well and English was only okay. And this week, he's had a massive game with 166 points, so I'm happy with that. Now, if you've been watching the videos up to this point, you know that the forward line is where I've really been investing my dollars. And I have no idea if that's a good strategy yet, but I thought that was my weakest point of the ground and now it's arguably my strongest. Um, and as you can see here with five gold players out of six, 
The scores have been pretty solid. No better than, none better than Errol Golden, who scored 195, which I think is just about the highest score that I've had of any player in this uh, in this team so far this season. And that multiplier gets him 234. So 234 from one player is absolutely fantastic. Mitch Owens also validated my uh, pick of him. He scored uh, 115, which was his second best score of the season. And that multiplier gives him 138. So that cost me two bucks to get Mitch Owens in my team. And it's a good long-term option as well. So I'm really happy with that so far. The only one that really let me down was Josh Rochelle, who's had a pretty good season up to date. Uh, but his last two games have been in his quietest two of the season. So just the 35 with seven possessions, uh, or eight possessions rather, against um, Geelong, they're not great. So we'll see in time whether that was a good move or not. But, um, you know, first or second week in the side, he's kind of had a bit of a stinker, which is unfortunate. But I'm really happy to say that Oscar Allen, if you remember, last week I was umming and ahhing about keeping in my team because he's gold, right? So he gets the multiplier of 1.2, but because he's gold, he actually takes up more salary cap. So I was thinking, knowing how much the Eagles are struggling at the moment, do I put a Cam Zerha in instead of Oscar Allen and potentially free up some cap to get uh, another silver or gold player into my team? But Oscar Allen had four goals on the weekend and a score of 113, his second best score for the season, which gives him that bonus of 136. So got to be pretty happy with that. Oscar Allen has repaid the faith and generally my forwards did well as well. Jeremy Cameron, 105 points straight up. Connor Rosie uh, with 133. He's had a pretty good month. Um, there's reason to think that 133 is conservative. Maybe he could do even better than that, as he has done several times this season. Overall, though, it's nice to have an improved score this week, um, despite the fact that heaps of my midfielders, even Lockie Neal on the bench there, scored just 78. So, um, Took Miller getting injured last week kind of hurt as well, because he would normally be in my team. Um, but what we're going to do now is open up my starter packs to see if I can do anything to improve my squad this week. So as you can see, I've got two forward packs, a midfielder pack, and three rucks. I don't need three rucks, so that's that's a little bit unfortunate. Maybe we'll start with those. Um, I could, I still want to improve my defense a little bit more, but uh, we'll see what we get here. Um, we've got a ruckman pack here, and it has got one player in it naturally, and I've got Pitt in it. So I think that's a player that I've already had, so that's not anything to really write home about. Let's see who else we got. I'm pretty happy with my rucks, so I'm pretty indifferent as to who I get here. Nick Nat Nui possibly played his last game, who knows? But it's still nice to have Nat Nui, I guess. And my third ruck is Nat Nui. So I got two Nat Nui. So that's a bit of a stinker, to be honest. Um, in fact, probably the worst ruckman you could pick at the moment. And I've got two of them. Oh, well, that's all right. Let's see who my midfielder pack is. I could really use a good midfielder. My midfield has been up and down this year. I'd really like Will Day. Tom Mitchell. Okay, we'll see in a little bit exactly what his averages are, uh, but I'm not sure if he cracks my team. What have we got here? Jason Horn Francis. Okay, so this could be a good longer term option there, um, as I don't think his fantasy scores are great at the moment, but he's obviously a long term gun player potentially, so we'll see. Finally, we have got Ollie Hollands. Okay, so another longer term one there. So I'm not too sure if we go back to my squad here. Um, how good these play pickups are. Let's see down here. As you can see down the bottom here, these are my latest pickups. So I already had Pitney um, and then Nat Nui twice. So not point, no point even looking at him. How's Tom Mitchell's season been this year? Pretty solid, pretty solid, but he rightfully will start outside my best 22. Jason Horn Francis, I'd imagine, has been a little bit up and down. That's two really good weeks actually there. Um, with uh, 116. So I'll weigh up whether to include him. I think the only player I drop him for um, would be Oscar Allen or uh, Jeremy Cameron at the moment, but I'm uh, reluctant to do that at the moment because those guys have been scoring really well for me. Uh, Ollie Hollands, how's he been going? 104. So his best game for the season, uh, and he'll probably get the Rising Star nomination if it hasn't come out yet. So uh, we'll see what happens there. But overall, Probably nothing to really improve my best 22. Just got to hope for a little bit more luck, uh, particularly on the midfield front. Hopefully I can crack 2,000 this week. I did say I wanted Will Day, so I'll just have a look on the transfer market, just out of curiosity as to what he would be going for. Okay, so yeah, what's that? A diamond Will Day uh, at 1.4. I don't have the salary cap for a start and I don't want to fork out 166 bucks. Uh, let's just see what the gold Will Days are going for, because you can see there's always a variety of prices. That one's 1190. Um, you'd really want him as a defender as well, rather than a midfielder. So there's prices of around 7.99 to about 12 bucks. So I'm not going to pull the trigger on Will Day at the moment. I was just kind of interested because I think this would be a good long-term option as a defender. He will end up a midfielder, and he's already scoring pretty well with 116 as his average, which give me, uh, which would give me 140 as well. So I'll weigh that up. 
um, potentially add him into my defense and uh, potentially drop Oscar Allen out of the team. What I will do as well is just have a little quick look through, um, you know, the gold ranked players. Uh, for some reason, a lot of silver players are more expensive than gold, but uh, we'll go through gold here and I'll just have a look what one's on offer. I think the reason sometimes you can get really good uh, bargain gold players is because they take up a lot of salary cap as well. So if you have a gold like Luke Foley like I do as well, um, they're not much good to you because you, you don't want to put them in your side because it costs salary cap. So by extension, there will be some bargains out there um, and I'll see, I'll have a look. I did spot one earlier and see if I can get one for like, I don't know, less than a dollar for a longer term player who's going to be good in a couple of years perhaps. I've got a dollar 48 in my account. Uh, and we'll just have a look. Jordan Dawson's going for 1950 there. That's that sounds about right. Jai Caldwell at 50 cents there is an interesting one, but he's a midfielder. I would rather the forward option. I might filter it to uh, defenders or forwards. I'll start with uh, defenders. So Billy Frampton for a couple of bucks, probably not worth it. Oh, Luke Ryan at 6.99 is a pretty good value there. Jack Sinclair at five bucks, that's a pretty good deal as well. This one's pretty juicy. Braden Campbell here. Um, his score is 78.8 which gives you 94.5. But the fact that he is a high draft pick, third year player, there's potential for that to really come up um, over the next couple of years. Again, I'm not just thinking about today's video and this this season even. I'm thinking two years down the track, Braden Campbell uh, at a 1.2 multiplier. That could be you know worth it. You know, If he's a defender who is uh, getting you 120 points a game in a couple of years, I think he has that capacity. So 60 cents, I think that's actually a good investment. At the worst case, I can just sell them again in a couple of years for a couple of bucks, and then I've made you know three times my profit. So I might actually pull the trigger here on Braden Campbell, but not play him in my side. Another interesting one here is Hayden Young for four dollars as a defender. Again, I'm trying to look at improving my defense, and for four dollars, that's a pretty good value one. I'm not going to do it today, but it's one to think about for next week. Anyway, guys, that will do for my game day squad update for this week. Let me know in the comments uh, how your team's going. Uh, what do you think of my strategic moves? Obviously, a little bit of a quieter one on the recruitment front this week, but hopefully that Braden Campbell one is a long-term option. Um, that's the cool thing about this game. You've got long-term assets that could appreciate, and you could um, you know sell them for more, or you can you know just do really well with that player in a number of years' time. But anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. If you're watching along and haven't got stuck in the fun yet, make sure you do join in the fun with. The the link in the description below. Again, uh, you can choose to put money into the game to play it, but you certainly don't need to, and you could definitely be competitive in this game without spending money. So it's the best of both worlds. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.